Oh, thank you. This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is Chris Abraham from The Chris Abraham Show, episode 5, and uh, no, season 5, episode 32, 20 dos, no, 30 dos, 30 y dos, anyway, I don't know any languages, I know 32, so, I was thinking about this weird condition I have. I'm actually going to the doctor, this really super specialist, but that's not what this is about. I'm going to a specialist called an electrocardio, electrocardiologist or whatever. And his job is to wonder why uh, I have AFib, but I haven't had AFib in a few months and I'm walking over this tree and I'm knocking on wood. And I feel like I might be out of the woods. Like, I felt so overconfident today that I had a big breakfast and a pot of coffee. So uh, that'll be realistic experience. That's what I do. So it's not like I'm trying to scam the doctor like I usually do. You know, everybody usually does. So... Uh, but that's not about this. I'm just going to walk up to Idido's coffee shop, my favorite coffee shop, and record this episode on the way, and then get my Uber from there, because it's like going to be a $50 round trip, because the doctors weigh the F out. And I was going to cancel the, the uh, appointment, because I'm feeling good, but I don't want to go ahead and play like that. So... I'm talking about aphantasia today and SDAM. And these are two conditions I didn't know I had till I was 50 and I'm self-diagnosed, but it all makes sense. Because when I was watching the TV show on Netflix, Amazon, called Space Force, there was a scene where one of the guards uh, on the Space Force grounds was flirting with the daughter of the Commander General of the Space Force, and she was making, I, th- I don't remember now, but she was making comments about visualizing. And he said, I can't visualize, I have aphantasia. And then at that exact moment, a million people from around the country looked up aphantasia and discovered that they uh, didn't have a mind's eye and they didn't know that they didn't have it because you only know what you know. And then to find out that the only reason I became a literature major, I believe, uh, aside from like the obvious thing, which is the inability to memorize in terms of flashcards that I can refer to in my mind's eye. Let's assume that I'm smarter than that. The reason why I did it is because I was so impressed as to how poetic language is. But it's not poetic. People are just literally... The language isn't poetic. People have magical visualization skills. And Marcel Proust, or Proust, or Proust, or Proust, Marcel Proust, He literally, when he bit into that Madeleine cookie, he literally, figuratively, was thrown into a rabbit hole of his own memories, his own visual, experiential, memorial, like, taste, smell, sight, everything. Like, there was a comprehensive, all... 12 senses experience of memories that he had that were catalyzed by this Madeleine cookie. 
And a lot of people have that. My best friend has extreme, it's called hyperphantasia, where he can go ahead and he can do CAD cam in his head. And, uh, and his brain also lies. Like, I'm like, do a, do a CAD cam of a 911 Porsche. And he totally could, but he doesn't know what the undercarriage of a Porsche is. He doesn't know what the dashboard of a 911 looks like. He didn't ask me what year. He didn't ask me automatic or manual or Tiptronic or double clutch. He didn't ask me any of those things. He didn't ask me what color leather. He didn't ask me what car. His imagination just makes shit up and fills in the blanks with lies. So... Anyway, the reason why I bring this up today is because I was watching this comedian and she was talking about how new girlfriends are extremely generous to their new men because they know that the men are, the men are dealing with new bodies, new women. They've been trained up by other ladies and that they're working on figuring out if this man has sexual potential and he, his, uh, his sexual performance is not based on the first time. So women give men a lot of rope. And, uh, and then one of the things she said is that, you know, uh, she's like, we all fake our first orgasm. All that moaning you do, you hear us do is to try to train you as to how close and how far you are from being good. I think that might be uh, Air Force uh, or whatever, Marine One. I feel like that's the Marine One helicopter that you hear. And then the third thing, which is most salient, uh, germane to this conversation, is um, she said the third thing is that we're imagining other people right like I wonder how much how much of a part of sex is imagining other people because the biggest thing in my entire life that people cannot handle when I tell them that I literally cannot visualize anything in my head and when I try all I see is black like darkness like when you close your eyes and you don't have a thought I uh The biggest zing is that they, when they realize that I can't visualize another person when I'm having sex and that I've never been able to do that. And I need to date someone who, 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 um, arouses me completely because I have no alternative. The person I'm looking at is literally the person I'm making love to. I'm never thinking about someone else. I'm never visualizing someone else. I'm never wishing I was somewhere else. Like, if I'm not sexually and physically presently attracted to you through eyes, ears, nose, and throat, then, uh, honestly, the only way we can have sex is with Viagra, right? Because, like... Like, I cannot visualize someone else if you don't arouse me and I don't have a deep desire to make a sweet love with you. I, I, there's nothing I can do about it, right? I can do stuff that doesn't... I can do a lot of stuff, but I can't do the stuff that really gets me into it unless I'm physically attracted to the human being in front of me. I can be attracted to the idea of that person. I could be attracted to that, the sexy personality. I could be attracted to just, you know, a certain part, uh, certain parts. I can be intoxicated by a situation or a smell. I can, I can be uh, attracted to bottoms and boobs and bellies and legs and toes and hands and clavicles and necks and faces, but you are all I have to feed from. I cannot eat of you and then imagine 
chicken fricassee. I don't know. Boeuf bourguignon. I cannot, I cannot, uh, I cannot make it this sweet love with you and then imagine, you know, 80s Cindy Crawford. So, or 80s Paulina Poroskova or whomever. So, c'est tout, c'est tout. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, I don't know how comprehensive or complete the reproduction of Ryan Reynolds or uh, whomever uh, in your imagination, how much it can make up for all that. I don't know if you can replace uh, full on everything down to kind of an experiential replacement, sexual replacement or lovemaking replacement where you're literally on top of Ryan Reynolds or, or, or Sophia, Sophia Gaga, 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 or, or, you know, 80s Cindy Crawford or, or whomever. Um, but I've never been able to do that. Like if I'm not looking at a picture or looking at you or looking at someone else, like I wonder if, if men who married women out of expectation, familiar expectation, are able to visualize being with a man or I don't even know what the magical powers are of this thing known as hypervisualization. I know it's on a spectrum, and I hear that people who have completely blacked out mind's eye, like I do, is less than 1%. But I feel like since it's a spectrum, there are a lot of low... I wonder if it's racial or gender-based or ethnic or whatever. But uh, anyway, there you have it. I'm walking through a construction site now, so I don't think that this is the best time to continue talking. So... I love you guys. I hope you're having fun, and I'll talk to you soon. If you have any questions, let me know. Smooches and booches. Bye-bye. for listening to the chris abraham show make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes until next time